I'd really like to invite uh, Richard Irving, Irvine, sorry, uh, who's the Chief Data Officer of NHS West Yorkshire ICB, um, to talk about interoperability, integration, and data sharing for joining adults. Thank you, Richard. Thanks very much, and it's good to be here. Um, I don't have the Backstreet Boys. I have um, <laughs> Dr. Lee yong uh, and he was the Director General of the World Health Organization. Um, he, he passed away some years ago, but he, he made this statement, to make people count, we first need to be able to count people. And it's a really good reminder that when we're using digital capability or when we're developing data capability, um, there's always someone at the at the end of that. So to absolutely um, think about the patient, the person, the individual who we're trying to develop health systems or to provide care for, um, and it's a good reminder. Um, I could talk about, so why, why is interoperability important? I could talk about HL7, I could talk about FHIR, um, some of the terminology and classification standards, uh, or, or some of the data standards that are in, in persistence, um, but that would be a bit dry and a bit conceptual. I want to bring it to life. Um, my very brilliant colleague at the back worked with me through the pandemic, so um, I, and, 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 and we talked about how long we can dine dine on some of the, the things we did. Uh, we think there's years to come. Anyway, I want to talk about um, shielding and vaccinations because I think this brings it home and, and it sort of has everything. So um, at some point, I think it was around the 10th of March 2020, we got a tap on the shoulder. Can you do something? Can you identify those who are the most clinically extraordinary, the most clinically vulnerable? That was the terminology used at that time. And, and, and can we identify them? We, we didn't really know what the, uh, we, we, we sort of had a hunch what the purpose was. Um, the shielded patient list was formed on the 19th of, um, of March, so nine days later, and all of those 800 and, 80,000, I'm sure I'll be corrected on that, individuals were written to at that point in time over the weekend. And, and, and the ability to do that and the ability then to um, join with um, general practice data using the extraction service to be able to subsequently um, build, uh, build uh, interoperability and fire messages back into GP and pharmacy systems, the ability to link with general practice data and send adverse reactions back to the MHRA and everything that goes with it, including passing uh, messages into your NHS app so you could go abroad and all the good stuff like that. That was only made possible because of the the years that have been spent before that, building systems, building interoperability, spending uh, hours, months, years on, on, on all those very brilliant standards that all of our systems and all of our data hangs off right now. And it's something that in the NHS, we should have pride in and we should look back at, at people who came before us and think, you did a good job there. And in my current role, I straddle Lead City Council as well. So I deal with children's services, data, it, data about rats and rubbish and everything in between mm -hmm. and and there is there are limited standards that persist there so when i when i look at the use of health data it, it it's it's easier in, in some regards anyway um, but that's a for, for me that's a really good example and it exemplifies why um why some of the work around interoperability is just so important and it allows us to do things and to manage people's health that that that, that wouldn't be possible without that so I want to do, um, touch on um, what, what interoper interoperability means in, 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 in our local systems. So first of all, um, uh, that investment persists both nationally and locally. So we still use all those interoperable standards. Uh, we still use all the same systems and the same processes that, that, that persist at national level. Um, but there's, there's, there's a difference here. So we're, we're quite close at a local system. We're quite close to the coalface. In fact, we are the cold face. Um, and I don't have to tell you that health needs are changing. People are, are, are living longer and we, we are trying to manage individuals' long-term conditions. And sometimes that can be really challenging. And we want to provide individuals with the, the most optimal experience and the right level of support. Um, and to do that, our, our focus is, 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 is 
absolutely on on those uh, healthcare organisations and how we deliver that care. But actually, we need to keep people out of hospital and we need to think about services that move right back upstream. So what does intervention and preventative services look like? How do we keep people um, away from the high cost of, of, of health care? And how do we protect our workforce so that they can focus on the right things? And that's a real challenge for us. And, 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 and data and insights and, and those interoperability standards allow us to see, see, see some of those challenges and join things together. Um, and and I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about how or, or what, what the what the um, how we can benefit through linked data sets and, and, and as we emerge beyond um, uh, beyond sort of the world of health and look at um, things like uh, social inequalities, how we build those kind of standards in. So what are we doing in Leeds? So this is my own plug. So um, I lead the Office of Data Analytics. It's, a, it's an integration between Leeds City Council and the ICB. We do brilliant, brilliant things. And, and our, our, our focus, there are four pillars. So first of all, we want to promote use of citywide uh, wide intelligence to make good decisions. That goes without saying. And we, we act as a system enabler. So we make sure that data is accessible to everyone who needs it in the right in the right time and in the right form. Um, we, we provide a single agreed version of the truth and we, uh, we provide the governance framework that wraps around that. Um, and, and, and I think we are gathering momentum, gaining maturity and starting to, to make a real difference. So that's my plug. Um, one of, the, one of the products that we develop or have developed is the Leeds data model. So if you imagine um, that, that linked data set that, 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 that we used for shielding and vaccinations, well, we have the same, the same artifacts and we bring that into the uh, Leeds data model. It's been, it's been running for some time. Um, the flow of general practice data has been in place for um, about eight, eight or so years now, and we join that with national commissioning data that, that flows from NHS England. We've got a whole heap of local data, including adult social care data, uh, and, and we, we, we have a wider range of um, social care data that flows in from the national um, uh, client level data set. And then we've got some, some other local data, which includes hospice data and so on and so forth. And, and, and this is really driving out some of the brilliant products that, that, that sit on the back of that. Um, so what, what, what do you use this for? So, so I've just, I've given a few examples. You can't read it, it's far too small, but um, some of the things we do is we look across our provider community. So you've got things like um, operational pressures or, or our system visibility work, uh, which allows us to look at flows, uh, uh, daily automated flows across those, those, those various health and social care organizations to allow us to understand what's happening, where are the issues, what, what, what do our waiting lists look like, uh, and so forth. And our, our, our population is segmented into, into, as you can imagine, you would do with a, a population health management solution. And we're starting to really get quite mature and quite sophisticated in what, what, what that intersegmental drift looks like. So what causes people to move from a healthy segment into uh, a, a long-term condition segment or frail or, 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 or whatever. And, and so we, we, we're starting to, to get quite sophisticated in terms of what the characteristics of those populations, what, co what are the factors that cause someone uh, or that, 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 that move from one area to another. Um, we, 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 we do a whole heap of stuff around prescribing. So we've got loads of people in Leeds who, who have a challenge with polypharmacy. And what we want to do is give them the best experience, but also reduce the cost of high, uh, or re reduce high cost drugs. Uh, and, uh, and what you tend to find is that um, it, those, those in more deprived communities have uh, really see that in, in, in uh, the, uh, the sharp end. And so, with uh, with 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 our, um, observing um, uh, our, our medicines data, we really focus on deprivation, inequalities, and so forth, and and, and that work's becoming stronger and stronger. And then um, at a really micro level, the ability to see for by person 
the their their health record in in a time series is really powerful. You put that in front of a, a multidisciplinary team and, and 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 think about the impact that will have. And this moves us away from sifting through discharge notices. So if if you look at this small graphic here, each of those dots is either um, a, a, a an episode of unplanned care, a, 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 an episode where or an appointment with their their GP or or, or and, and and that's over the space of probably a year and a half. So if you can see the dots, that isn't the best experience for that person. It, it cannot be. That's not how we should deliver healthcare. And what we need to do is to think about how how could we how could we deliver a better experience and how can we reduce cost. I've got a worked example. So we've got the healthy leads planning leads, utterly brilliant. So this allows us to uh, this allows us to focus on our priorities. We can't do everything, but we can focus on particular needs. And one of our needs is to uh, reduce preventable un unplanned care um, across all of our health settings. So uh, you will know in this room that um, uh, the, that we have a problem. We have a problem nationally that people hit the health system. They get they, they hit um, an ED. They get admitted to a ward, and we cannot get them off a ward until there's capacity. For example, in in adult social care, and they sit there, and that experience is is really poor. And it tends to be the same people who we get back in and back in and back, and it's like a revolving door. So our focus is really to find out who, what, what are the behaviours, what are the characteristics of those populations, what can we do about them. So um, uh, out of the Leeds data model, we, we do lots of lots of, um, we've got some sophisticated capability that will allow us to, first of all, identify the behaviours, the characteristics of those populations. Now, in time, we'll get into the, not just the, the who, but the why. And then what do we do about that? And, and, and that's, that, that, that's, that's coming. So this worked example is um, uh, we know that we've got a particular problem with um, high numbers of uh, unplanned um, um, ad admission for uh, people who, who fall amongst our frail population. It goes without saying, old people who are frail fall, and that's, that's just the nature of it, and, uh, and then they'll sit in a ward. But why have we got this problem that is so acute in pockets of the city? What, why, why, when I look at areas like Bermontoft, Hare Hills, and Richmond Hill, why, why are those areas almost twice in, in terms of uh, bed occupancy, they, they, the, the, that per capita take up twice the amount of time I, we, these these are questions that, that that will allow us to then explore what do we do about those and, and how do we identify what the characteristics are and, and, and therefore how do we put in those preventative measures that will stop that happening. Um, I put a quote. I won't read the quote out. That's uh, the quote is by Councillor James Lewis, who's the leader of Leeds to Council. The picture is not of Councillor um, James Lewis. The picture is of uh, uh, Sir Michael Marmot, who visited Leeds last year, and uh, Leeds became or, or celebrated becoming a Marmot city, and and and. Um, and um, Sir Michael Marmot's work is all about looking at those factors, those social factors that influence someone's health. And we know that those living in the most, uh, the poorer communities experience by far the poorest health outcomes. And so um, working with the University College London Institute of Health Equity through this year and next, we'll start to tease out what the triggers for that. And, and our starting point is that every child needs the best best support in all the best start in life um, and how do we build sustainable communities it's a massive piece of work and what that will lend itself to is how do we take data or non NHS data and link it easily with NHS data there are loads of barriers to doing that um, apart from the legislative um, uh, arrangements in place but but that's our challenge and, and what we really want to do is to find out what are the factors in a household so um, is there crime, is there, uh, is there antisocial behaviour, is there mental health, is, is, is that young person an unpaid carer or a young carer in the household? So how do we tease that out and what do we do about it? And, and, and this is the journey we're on now to think about how we, how we go beyond NHS data and start to really understand the problems as a city we face. 
And then finally, I, I mentioned we're getting into um, uh, our, uh, the way that we can predict and prescribe what we do about something. And, uh, and so we've got a growing and burgeoning uh, machine learning and predictive analysis uh, space uh, in, in Leeds. And we're trying to answer some of the questions that I'm sure that, that, that you will have thought about. So for example, who will we see in winter? So who, based on their characteristics of turning up in general practice, who are gonna see in winter, who's gonna turn up in an ED and be admitted to a ward? If we can predict that and we can look, look, look upstream in time, then we can do something about it. Who, uh, what are the characteristics of people uh, who are in future going to receive a diabetes um, uh, diagnosis? Th these, these are real world problems that affect us all the time and drive high cost and, and poor experience. And that's where we want to challenge. I want to finish with some challenges. Uh, I'm just going to leave you with these. So, um, and in no particular order, Crikey information governance difficult. It, 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 it's there to enable, but you've got a, a, a health system that's moving far quicker than the legislative framework that can support it. Interoperability is challenging. We do a whole heap of things to close the gap locally, but we still, we still have that legislative framework. Um, local need or processing data support local need is, 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 is still quite inefficient. Um, particularly when you try and cross over from um, a, a, the NHS world into the non-NHS world and how we get around that. Um, and a lot of it's about hearts and minds. Information sharing is still challenging. We've been going on about this for ages. Um, you've got technology differences. Um, you've, al you've also got uh, the fact that we use commissioning data. It flows into NHS England from our providers and back to the ICB. By the time we get it, it's stale. It's six weeks, eight weeks stale. That's not good enough. We need it to run, flow faster or we need to rely on local data um, to, to determine what we do today about what happened yesterday and that's where we need to be. And finally, it's a mindset change. Crikey, we're trying to develop loads and loads of insights to stimulate conversation, to, to, to drive decision-making through evidence. But our, our clinicians and, and, every, and our leaders and, and, and service managers Crikey, they, were, they, they, didn't, they, they didn't go through a whole heap of learning around analytics. And, and so we need to make things easier. We need to make the world of, of data easier to consume. Um, thank you very much. That's me done. <laughs>